We're putting the wraps on a very soggy Christmas across central and eastern Kentucky. And up next, we're going to track the possibility of additional rounds of heavy rain into the weekend. Coming up, a west side apartment complex catches fire, forcing dozens of people to evacuate. It's a Christmas tradition one local family couldn't imagine going without their story. Coming up. This is WKYT News at 5. Merry Christmas and thanks for joining us here on WKYT. I'm Christian Kennedy. Sam and Amber have the night off. Heavy rains across central and eastern Kentucky are flooding some low lying areas. That's why it is a first alert severe weather day here at WKYT. And that's why we begin this Christmas night with Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey. Hey, Chris. And thankfully, the heaviest rains are beginning to wind down, at least with this go around. Defender Radar Network earlier in the day tracking showers, thunderstorms to wake up to on Christmas morning, putting down way too much water. Flooding problems, especially along and south of the Interstate 64 corridor. Door, but on your uh, Defender Radar Network, only some lighter rains left over. That flash flood warning or flood warnings that were out for parts of southern and southeastern Kentucky have expired as of just a few minutes ago. Still a uh, flood warning out for northeastern Kentucky. That includes Boyd, Carter, and uh, the Greenup County area. We get into parts of the Bluegrass region. Now it's just some general light rains that are out there. Still, though, it's an ugly view. A lot of low clouds, a lot of drizzle, a lot of fog, and those misty showers that are uh, continuing to press on through the area. Heaviest rains for now have shifted into the volunteer state of Tennessee and points to the south. That's where we actually have a front. It is basically the uh, difference now between chilly air to the north, warm air to the south. That boundary is going to lift its way back to the north as we head into the day tomorrow, and that's going to mean a renewed threat for some showers and thunderstorms, not only tomorrow, but into Sunday and Monday. Look at where the front is. Notice southeastern Kentucky, still low 60s, 51 Lexington, a few upper 40s showing up into parts of northern Kentucky. The warm air will win the battle as we go through the next 24 hours. But coming up, I'll show you why that isn't necessarily a good thing for a waterlogged bluegrass day. Full forecast in 10 minutes. Boyle County has significant flash flooding today. Some roads did have to be shut down for some time. We're told those roads have since reopened. Also in Perryville, five families had to evacuate their homes for a few hours because of rising waters. Boyle County Director of Emergency Management Mike Wilder says the places affected today are ones typically prone to flash flooding. He says it is just really important for people to take caution when rain is expected. The thing about flash flooding is it comes up very, very quickly and it goes down just about as quickly as it rises. And so we had, uh, we did have the county road department, we had the state road department and the city of Danville out. Uh, we put some barricades up, we closed some streets and some roads briefly uh, until the water receded. And it, but it receded, uh, probably we got started a little before 8 o'clock this morning and probably by 10. We were good again. Coming up, you will hear from one family dealing with record rising waters. To keep up with the latest road closures and attract the storms, even when you're away from the TV, go to WKYT.com or download our WKYT weather app. Smoke and flames woke people up in a Lexington apartment complex this Christmas morning. Firefighters say a fire sparked at the Cambridge Place apartments around 2.30 a.m., forcing two families up and out of their homes. WKYT's Mike Byer went out there to take a look at the damage. Dozens of people are now safely back in their apartments after a fire forced them to evacuate early this morning. The good story in this was that they had working smoke detectors. So it woke up everybody in the house and they were able to call 911 and get out safely. This after the Lexington Fire Department responded to a fire around 2.30 a.m. at the Cambridge Place Apartments on the city's west side. First responders tell us when they arrived on scene that they located a fire coming from a first floor apartment unit. Firefighters say that fire started because of a furnace. Crews did a great job, put it out quickly. Uh, it ended up being determined that it was part of the HVAC system. As a result, the apartment where the fire started and the one directly above it received significant damages. The two families living in them, as well as dozens of others, had to be evacuated while firefighters put out the flames, which they were able to contain to just the first floor unit. Fortunately, there were no injuries. To make sure that we don't face any fires on this Christmas Day, like the one that happened here at Cambridge Apartments, Lexington firefighters say we should follow these tips. Make sure that you check all of your smoke detectors, that they're working properly, 
got fresh batteries in them, as well as uh, this fire was began in the HVAC unit, and uh, so it's a good idea to get them checked. On top of that, firefighters say it's also a good idea that we sweep out our fireplaces. In Lexington, Mike Byer, WKYT. We are told the property owners are taking care of those families without a home right now. The owners are repairing the apartments. A family in Perry County is without a home tonight after a fire destroyed it on Christmas Eve. The fire started around 7.30 last night on Walker Lane in the busy community. Firefighters from two volunteer departments responded. And they were not able to save the home. Crews say no one was inside at the time. Just kind of sucks that it's Christmas Eve and, you know, they lose everything they've got. It's, it's a little rough. You leave your family sitting at the house, you know, to go out and help your neighbor. But, you know, that's what we're here for. Investigators are still trying to figure out what started that fire. A man is in jail tonight accused of stabbing someone on Christmas Eve. Our county by county coverage at 5 begins in Mercer County. Deputies say last night on Grapevine Road, 58 year old Terry Winburn stabbed a man in the stomach. Emergency crews flew that man to UK hospital for treatment. No word on his condition. Deputies say Winburn ran away from them and that a canine unit tracked him down. Winburn is facing a charge of assault. In Floyd County, state police have identified the four people killed in last night's crash. The wreck happened on Kentucky 114 in the Middle Creek community. Troopers say 54 year old Sandra Bauer was driving east when she crossed the center line and hit another car head on. Bauer and the driver of the other car, 52 year old Roland Patrick, died. Two of Bauer's four passengers, four year old Nevaeh Bauer and an unidentified woman, died. The two other passengers, Pamela Kendrick Bauer and five-year-old Brayden Bauer, went to the hospital. And in Wolf County, state police are looking for the driver involved in a deadly hit and run. The crash happened last night on Christmas Eve in Wolf County on Kentucky 191. State police say someone hit and killed 32-year-old Jamie Robinson. Robinson was from Campton. Troopers have not released any information about the driver responsible for that crash. The meal is a Christmas tradition. Today, the Salvation Army in Lexington served food to hundreds of people in need. Hundreds of volunteers helped out. New at 5, WKYT's Caitlin Sentner sits down with families at the Salvation Army. It's a Christmas tradition that never gets old for one local family. They volunteer every Christmas and every year. They say it's a blessing. The Bradley family, we're talking mom, dad, sisters, brother-in-law, nieces, and nephews all come out to volunteer at the Salvation Army in Lexington. Where are your family today? <laughs> we'll take them. Today, in the spirit of Christmas, they took care of strangers, getting them drinks, food, dessert, and engaging in plain old conversation. It's an experience 23-year-old Ellen and 19-year-old Claire say is a humbling one. It was a switch up from our tradition that we had normally done with our family, you know, staying at home, having breakfast together. Because this is what Christmas is all about. It's about giving for, to other people and um, just showing love to people that you may not know, but to love them anyways. The Salvation Army was prepared to feed 800 today. More than 300 volunteers showed to help out. In Lexington, Caitlin Sentner, WKYT. And call this a Christmas miracle. We just found out the Salvation Army reached its $350,000 Red Kettle campaign fundraising goal. Two Lexington sisters who lost their parents earlier this year found a way this Christmas to keep their memory alive. The parents of Elizabeth Knight and Becca Worcester spent their final months under the care of Hospice of the Bluegrass. WKYT's Sean Moody shows us how the sisters honored their loved ones lost. This might not be the first place you think of when it comes to Christmas traditions. You remember when Dad would say, Santa wants a Pepsi this year? <laughs> yes! <laughs> but for Elizabeth Knight and Becca Worcester, it's kind of a bridge between the old and the new. Their dad spent his last days in this hospice wing earlier this year. Their mom, not long after. That's both parents in just a few months. We didn't think that at age 27 and 32 that we would be parentless. And it has had its challenges. And Elizabeth and Becca were worried that their family Christmas traditions might die along with them. Like as soon as they passed away, one of our first thoughts was Christmas is really going to be awful and really hard to do. Until Elizabeth had an idea. It was a no-brainer that we would do this together. The families on this floor 
are in a tough spot. It's hard. I can't imagine the people here just what they're going through on Christmas. And perhaps no one knows what they need better than Elizabeth and Becca. We have colored pencils, candy, socks, toiletry items, just anything that we wish we had when we were here. So while they won't get to spend another Christmas around the tree with their mom and dad, Elizabeth and Becca will be able to bring those traditions to the people who need a smile most of all. Right now we don't have kids that wake up and want their breakfast, and so we're adopting the hospice center. <laughs> In Lexington, Sean Moody, WKYT. Those are some great volunteers. If you would like to volunteer with Hospice of the Bluegrass, you can visit hospicebg.org. Pope Francis has delivered his traditional Christmas Day message to the city and the world. In the speech, the Pope called for peace in Syria, Libya, and other parts of the world. Enamar Tranga reports from Vatican City. Buon Natale. Pope Francis condemned brutal acts of terrorism in his Christmas Day message and prayed for an end to war and human suffering. He also offered hope. The grace of God can convert hearts and offer mankind a way out of humanly insoluble situations. Tens of thousands of faithful pack St. Peter's Square. He uses his influence and who he is and his role in the Catholic Church to bring our attention to the things that Jesus would want us to bring attention to. Security was heavy and pilgrims had to go through two security checks before entering. It's part of life right now, so I'd rather know that we're safe here. The Pope also spoke of those who are closest to his heart, the poor and the disadvantaged. At the community of Sant'Egidio, members are taking the Pope's message to heart. The Catholic charity feeds over 200,000 homeless on Christmas Day. This is the re revolutionary force of this Pope. He said the gospel is not only a spiritual or religious message, but the gospel is also a political program to change the world. Member Alberto Quattrucci says Francis's devotion to the poor is contagious. The number of volunteers is up, not only among Catholics, but also among non-Catholics and even non-believers. Anna Matranga, CBS News, the Vatican. Pope Francis also called for peace talks between Israelis and the Palestinians and an end to conflicts in Ukraine, Colombia, and Burundi. This is Pope Francis' third Christmas as the head of the Catholic Church. Bristol Palin is celebrating the birth of her second child today. Palin, who launched an abstinence campaign after giving birth as an unwed teenage mother, posted on Instagram yesterday that she gave birth to a girl, Sailor Grace, on Wednesday. Bristol is the daughter of 2008 Republican vice presidential nominee Sarah Palin. Bristol has not publicly identified the child's father. She announced she was pregnant shortly after breaking off her engagement to Medal of Honor recipient and Kentuckian Dakota Meyer last spring. Yesterday, Meyer tweeted this picture saying, quote, best Christmas present ever. Now it's time for better living, health education, and consumer news that impacts your life. Sometimes you get Christmas gifts that were not on your wish list, and returning gifts you don't want can be difficult. Kenneth Craig explains. When Celeste Worthington goes holiday shopping, she tries to find gifts her family won't want to return, but she always has a backup plan. I ask for gift receipts and I usually put it in the box or with the gift. And that's a smart idea, according to Consumer Reports. The group estimates around 40% of Americans try to return or exchange a gift they don't like. But experts say doing that is becoming more difficult without a receipt because of fraud. An increasing number of merchants are reporting they've been victimized by shoplifters who then try to return stolen items for cash. 85% of retailers now require uh, 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 identification, for example, if you don't have a receipt. Consumer Reports editor Todd Mark says if you don't have a receipt and are trying to get a refund, keep the gift in its unopened original package. He says be prepared for possible restocking fees and store credit only. It can be frustrating. Many retailers allow shoppers to return a holiday gift until the end of January. Gerald Foreman told us his plan this holiday season is avoiding that possibility altogether. I've found that the best thing to do really is to, to give money. Kenneth Craig, CBS News, Edgewater, New Jersey. This holiday season, many FedEx customers went on Twitter and Facebook to complain about deliveries not arriving in time for Christmas. 
The company says it's doing everything it can to get shipments delivered by Christmas despite slight delays. A spokeswoman says the delays are due to heavier than planned volumes on last minute shipments and severe weather in some parts of the U.S. At UPS, a spokeswoman says they have not had a big problem with delivering packages on time. McDonald's is experimenting with a limited rollout of macaroni and cheese. The popular comfort food popped up this summer on menus at 18 Cleveland, Ohio restaurants. A McDonald's spokesperson says they're always looking for new ways to, quote, offer relevant taste to our customers. They're selling the mac and cheese entree as part of Happy Meals and as a separate item through February. McDonald's leader says after February, they will evaluate customer feedback. For more help